Trench and excavation is considered one of the most dangerous work activities in the construction industry, and for good reason. Cave-ins, which is the most common and most dangerous hazard in trench and excavation, cause an average of two deaths a month. So naturally, we need to protect our workforce from cave-ins. We do this through either shoring, shielding, and or sloping or benching. Well, how can we determine what type of soil it is? Through visual and manual tests, which we'll cover now. Hi, I'm Sergio with a and Safety, and in this video, we will talk about the different types of soil you may encounter when excavating and how to classify them. Before work each day, or when any trench conditions change, a competent person must test the soil to ensure the soil is safe and that the safety measures are taken. OSHA requires that the competent person classify the soil through at least one visual and one manual test. The visual test or analysis is conducted to determine qualitative information regarding the excavation site in general, the soil adjacent to the excavation, the soil forming the sides of the open excavation, and the soil taken as sampled from the excavated material. For a thorough visual test, be sure to observe samples of the soil that are excavated and soil in the sides of the excavation. If the soil in question is primarily composed of fine grain material, it is cohesive material. If the soil is composed primarily of coarse grain sand or gravel, it is granular material. Be sure to observe the soil as it is being excavated as well. Soil that remains in clumps when excavated is cohesive, and soil that breaks up easily does not stay in clumps is granular. Observe the size of the open excavation and the surface area adjacent to the excavation. If you discover crack-like openings such as tension cracks or notice chunks of soil spall off the vertical sides, the soil may be fissured. Don't forget to observe the area adjacent to the excavation and the excavation itself for evidence of existing utility and other ground structures and to identify previously disturbed soil. And be sure to always keep an eye out for evidence of surface water, water seeping from the sides of the excavation, or the location of the level of the water table. Observe the open sides of the excavation to identify layered systems and whether the layers slope towards the excavation. And finally, observe the area adjacent to the excavation and the area within the excavation for sources of vibrations that may affect the stability of the excavation face. Now that you have performed your visual test, it's time to get your hands dirty and perform at least one manual test. These manual tests are conducted to determine quantitative as well as qualitative properties of soil and include the plasticity tests, dry strength tests, thumb penetration tests, drying tests, and other strength tests. Let's quickly go over each of the manual tests and how to conduct them. Let's start off with the plasticity test. For this test, we mold a moist or wet sample of soil into a ball and attempt to roll it into threads as thin as 1 8 of an inch in diameter. Cohesive material can be successfully rolled into threads without crumbling. For example, if you have a 1 8 inch thread that is at least two inches long and it can be held on one end without tearing, the soil is cohesive. Next, we have the dry strength test. For this test, we need a dry sample of soil and attempt to break it. If the soil crumbles on its own or with moderate pressure into individual grains or fine powder, it is granular. If the soil falls into clumps, which then breaks up into smaller clumps, but the smaller clumps can be only broken with great difficulty, it may be clay in any combination with gravel, sand, or silt. And if the soil breaks into clumps, which do not break up into smaller clumps and which can only be broken with difficulty, and there is no visual indication that the soil is fissured, the soil may be considered unfissured. Okay, now moving on to the thumb penetration test, and just as the name describes it, we will be shoving our thumb into some dirt. This test can be used to estimate the unconfined compressive strength of cohesive soils. Type A soils with an unconfined compressive strength of 1.5 tons per square foot can be willingly indented by the thumb. However, they can be penetrated by thumb only with great force. Type B soils with an unconfined compressive strength greater than 0.5 tons per square foot, but no more than 1.5 tons per square foot, can be penetrated by the thumb no more than the length of the thumbnail. And type C soil with an unconfined compressive strength of 0.5 tons per square foot can be easily penetrated several inches by the thumb and can be molded by light finger pressure. This test should be conducted on an undisturbed soil sample such as a large clump of spoil, as soon as feasible after excavation to keep a minimum the effects of exposure of drying influences. If the excavation is later exposed to wetting influences such as rain, the classification of the soil must be assessed and changed accordingly. The next manual test you may conduct to classify the soil is through the drying test. The basic purpose of this test is to differentiate between cohesive material with fissures, unfissured cohesive material, and granular material. The procedure for the drying test involves drying a sample of soil. It's approximately one inch thick to six inches in diameter until it is thoroughly dry. If the sample develops cracks as it dries, significant fissures are indicated. Samples that dry without cracking are to be broken by hand. If considerable force is necessary to break a sample, 
the soil has significant cohesive material content. The soil can be classified as an unfissured cohesive material, and the unconfined compressed strength should be determined. If a sample breaks easily by hand, it is either a fissured cohesive material or a granular material. To distinguish between the two, pulverize the dried clumps of the sample by hand or by stepping on them. If the clumps do not pulverize easily into very small fragments, the material is granular. And last but not least, we have other strength tests which estimates the unconfined compressive strength of soils and can be obtained by the use of a pocket penetrometer or by using hand-operated shear vane. Operate the equipment according to the manufacturer's instructions and it should provide you with an accurate estimate of the soil's unconfined compressive strength. After you have completed and documented a thorough visual test and have conducted at least one manual test, determine the class of soil based on the soil type definitions I provided you with at the beginning of the video. Got your soil type? Great. Now let's pick your protective system which we'll cover in the next video. And just like that, you're ready to get out there and classify some soil, if you're a competent person, of course. We hope this video has given you a better understanding of the different types of soil you may encounter while excavating and the methods to use in order to classify them. Remember, classify the soil by performing a visual test and at least one manual test. Be sure to stay tuned for our next video as we will cover the two protective systems you may use to protect employees from cave-ins shielding, and shoring. If you have any questions or need assistance with your safety program, feel free to contact us using the information provided below. And we wanna hear from you guys in the comments as well. Do you work with trenching and excavations? What is your preferred method to classify soils? And lastly, follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated with our latest safety tips and tricks. And as always, until next time, be safe and thank you.